Hey guys, it's Morna, and in this video, we're going to be talking about industrial design prototypes. Now, it's one thing to go around and, and try and learn all the uh, tips and tricks and how to make prototypes and all that stuff, but there's actually three questions that you should be asking before you embark on any kind of prototype uh, when you're designing a product. So, the top three questions you should ask before making any prototype coming up. first question you should ask is why are you making a prototype <laughs> okay what is the purpose of this prototype because there are at least four different types of prototypes you could be making and I'm going to be talking about those right now so at the beginning of the process there is what's called like a working model and this is something that you can make very quickly. It doesn't necessarily matter what it looks like. And typically a working model is going to be testing aspects such as the form of the product. Okay, so you want to think about different ways that you can generate different forms quickly, get them made physically, and then start testing what is the best form. So here's an example of a project I worked on at Design Force a couple years ago. It's a uh, massager. So we, we were asked to uh, redesign the, sort of the appearance, the physical appearance of it. And one of the first things that I did was do these kind of um, foam studies. So there were a few different ways that the uh, massager could be held. One of the things that I was trying to do is just look at a couple different forms and then see what they feel like in the hand. Now one thing that you'll probably notice with uh, these foam models is that they are pretty sketchy looking. I have not spent any time trying to make them look beautiful. That's not the purpose here. The other thing that's going to be tested is the size. You know, how big or small this thing should be. Okay, and especially when it's something like that that has some kind of human factor related to it, like, you know, it, it, it's handheld. Okay, so that's one thing that you are going to be wanting to um, um, test. So coming back to our massager example, after I did those rough uh, foam models, then I did some renderings and then quickly moved into CAD once we had an idea of which direction. we So once I had a form that I was happy with, the next step was to print the CAD and test the size and form. So for this product, the diameter of this portion uh, could only be so small because inside there was the motor, the electronics, the screws and screw bosses that hold the two parts together, etc. However, there was some latitude with the size of this upper portion. So the plan for prototyping was to split the form. And we, we printed one base, which is the white part you'll see, and created different top parts of varying sizes that were kind of interchangeable so that we could test out different top parts. One of the purposes of doing it this way was speed. To print out the entire prototype took a long time and we only really needed to test the top portion. We knew that we would probably need a few go-arounds to test the top portion, so this was an efficient way of doing that. I also wanted to mention that um, if you are creating a working model to test something out, don't be afraid to buy something, cut it apart. Like if you see something that's existing, that is a product in the world, and you're like, oh, I could use half of that or one piece of it, and all you have to do is go and buy it, that is a very efficient way of um, being able to figure something out quickly. And one example I'll tell you, you know, that comes to mind is when we designed a uh, shopping cart, you know, one thing that is, well, there's multiple things that are very similar to shopping carts. I mean, you think of anything that has wheels and people push or pull it, right? And so similar things are like, you know, golf carts or um, one thing is a stroller, okay? So what we did is, is we went and purchased a secondhand stroller and then started cutting it up and, and starting to figure out some things, some aspects of the design with this kind of like, you know, um, uh, kind of half, <laughs> half stroller, half prototype. I mean, it did not, it was pretty, you know, confused looking. 
but it helped us to think through some aspects of the design and figure something out quickly in an efficient way. So don't be afraid to do that in your kind of working models. So number two is what's called an appearance model. Now appearance models, uh, first of all, the purpose of that type of model is <laughs> just like the name sounds, making it appear to be like a, your concept. So they could be used at different points in the product development process for taking to trade shows to start showing people, you know, what your concept is. They could be shown to buyers. Um, they could be shown to investors. They could be used in promotional material for marketing material. So they could be, you know, you could take photographs of your appearance models and use those photographs in um, marketing material to promote your product. Now, it really depends exactly where you are in the process and what you're trying to achieve with the appearance model. But just know that just because something looks like it's real doesn't mean it will actually A, work. Okay, so you could make appearance models that just look like the real thing, but have do not function. Okay, um, or you could have appearance models that also function. Yeah, so it really depends. So number three, is the test and verification type of prototype. And this is further along in the process, uh, closer to the end of the process than necessarily the beginning, okay? Uh, prototypes for testing and verification typically have like a lot more details in them. You're starting to um, test out the design, all the details in the design. Does it go together? Are there interferences? You know, just because you do an interference check in, in your CAD program doesn't necessarily mean, you know, there could be an interference that you don't know about. You know, you make uh, these prototypes for um, testing out the assembly. Like, is it possible? Have you designed your parts in such a way that where it's possible to put them together. If it's a product with electronics, you can be testing your, your designed plastic housing with the real electronics. So you can, you're, you're verifying all the fits and that things go together and it works. And um, yeah, so that is that. Number four is uh, low volume pre-production prototypes for beta testing. Now these are things that um, the purpose of this type of prototype, you, you want to uh, make uh, maybe 10, 15 different models and give, put them in the hands of your users. So, you know, before you go and spend a bunch of money on manufacturing, you are making a lower vol a smaller volume of things, of products that work so that you can test them out and get feedback from people and then um, implement those changes into the design before manufacturing, okay? Uh, and actually where I work at Design Force, we, um, we delivered like, I think 15 prototypes, working prototypes for, it was a medical wearable and it had to, they had to function because they were, they are now being used for medical trials. So that's sort of in the process, but I can't really tell you what it is, but it's pretty cool. <laughs> so yeah, that's what that is. The second question is what is the ideal material and method for prototyping. Okay, so once, you, once you've established what your purpose is for making this prototype, and also you can just let the, the where you are in the process can somewhat guide you in terms of uh, the type of prototype, prototype you are making. Once you know that, uh, you can start to figure out the material and method. Any kind of foam models or card models like paper card uh, or 3D printing, um, are all kind of appropriate materials and or process uh, for working models, okay? And they can help you figure out um, things like the form and size very quickly. And just keep that in mind that all you're trying to do at this stage is figure, figure a few things out quickly. And once you know those kind of, you can kind of knock those things off your list, then you can get into the more detailed uh, uh, kind of prototypes. One thing I wanted to mention is that whenever I think about uh, the materials made for prototyping and how that translates into a final product, 
I always think of this story by Barbara Oscarby. They're uh, uh, an English um, duo designer. I think I read it somewhere where one of them had said that, you know, one of the reasons why a lot of their products were made in sheet metal is because their kind of working method, how they developed models and prototypes, was using paper card. So if you think of paper card, it's a sheet material, right? So in making these kind of mock-ups, models, concepts, uh, that, that, that material really had an influence on the final, um, not only the final form, but the final, um, you know, material and, and manufacturing process, which I think is really interesting. I think you can also think about this in a creative way and, um, you know, how using specific materials uh, in your working models can translate into, you know, real actual materials and process in the, the manufactured good. So I wanted to share that with you. So the third question is, and it is getting kind of dark in here, but does your prototype need to function? Now, answering this question is going to mean um, how much work you need to do in order to uh, prepare your prototype uh, to work. <laughs> prepare your prototype, your files to be prototyped, okay? Now, what do I mean by that? Um, if your prototype needs to function or if there are multiple parts in the assembly um, that need to fit together in some sort of uh, assembly, you're gonna need to figure out more of the details about how these different parts relate to each other so that they will either A, stay together, or B, function in whatever way they need to function. You know, there, there is this idea, well, it's not an idea, there is uh, one aspect of the product design process, which is called uh, design for manufacturing or DFM. And uh, it's the idea that, you know, once you have your final design, uh, then all of those parts need to be designed. This is a separate activity. You take all those parts, they need to be designed for manufacturing. And I think what some people don't understand is that when you're making a prototype, there is a similar process that needs to happen. You'll have your concept files, okay? But then you need to design all of those parts in order to make them so that you can make the prototype. Uh, it, you need to detail those parts uh, for your prototype, okay? So there's kind of a similar process that needs to happen. It's similar to design for manufacturing, but it's like design for prototyping. And it entirely depends on the process that you've chosen to use for your prototypes and whether or not they have to function or not, if there are multiple parts that need to stay together, or what is the situation. So that's the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And um, you know, if you if you did, if you found value in this video, I always appreciate it um, if you share my videos or like them or comment. We'll see you next time.